Okay, welcome to our webinar on uh, Link 2013 Enterprise Voice and if it's right for your organization. My name is Travis Hargett. I'm the president of Eastridge. I'd like to introduce Christopher Summers, our director of advanced infrastructure here at Eastridge. Um, Christopher, you've got it, and this meeting is being recorded. Great. Hello, everybody. I hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, my name is Christopher Summers, and I'm the Director of Advanced Infrastructure, as Travis said. Today, we're here to talk about Link 2013 Enterprise Voice and how this might right, be right for your company, and also to sort of talk about some best practices around deploying Link Enterprise Voice. Um, we're going to talk a little bit uh, about quality of service, about call admission control, um, the voice platform flexibility, um, connectivity to the public switch telephone network or the PSTN, and then a little bit about high availability or, or branch office options that you might have. So as Travis mentions, we're, we're Eastridge. Um, we've been a dedicated Microsoft partner for 15 years. Um, so we've been doing this for a little while. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and get right into the content. So um, some link enterprise benefits. Um, so obviously, um, you can work from anywhere. Um, we're seeing a lot of productivity gains from the mobile client, um, as well as uh, communication uh, from anywhere, anytime. Um, definitely, you're going to have a, a connected experience with Link. Um, it, it, basically, you're going to enable video, voice, IM presence across all of your, your endpoint devices. And this makes things easier, for, makes, team, makes it easier for teams to share ideas and keep in sync um, and reduce costs uh, by, by utilizing the video conferencing, um, as well as the, the web sharing and the sharing of desktops and the sharing of PowerPoint. Um, it's also simpler to manage than ever before. Um, the, the tool set's familiar with pretty much uh, or aligns across the Microsoft tool set. Um, and you can reduce your total uh, cost of ownership by reducing some infrastructure costs associated with legacy telephone systems. Um, so, so Link is truly a replacement for your IP PBX or your PBX. Um, so moving on. So interoperability between Link and your, your current uh, IP PBX or PBX system um, has gotten a lot easier. Um, definitely with media gateways, you can connect into your current system. Um, it's also a lot easier to connect um, to the public switch network, which we'll, we'll talk about. Um, but when you start uh, interoperating link with your current system, you really have to understand your, your dial plans, your media termination points, and how your media flows within your network, uh, whether that's you know, traditional copper or whether that's over your IP network. Um, what we found is that you've got to stick with the Microsoft documented, documented and supported technologies. Um, while a lot of these are based on, a lot of the technologies underpinning Link are based on RFC uh, uh, standards, you just really need to make sure that you're utilizing equipment and technologies um, that are, have been tested and approved by Microsoft. It'll make things a lot easier. And then obviously you've got to test, test, and test, and test again before you start rolling link out to, to multiple endpoints or multiple end users. Um, with Link 2013, um, you're able to set up multiple logical routes between Link and gateways. Um, prior to uh, the 2013 version, you had to use uh, dummy DNS records. Um, and this, this really uh, allows um, redundancy and high availability in your system. Um, and, and it's very useful when you want to use specific media resources on your PBX to interop with Link. Let me know if I'm going too fast, guys. Um, so one of the other great advantages with Link 2013 is you can, you can start implementing direct SIP trunks. Um, there's a huge cost savings associated with SIP trunks, um, and you can provision those uh, fairly easily. And there are, there, are, there are many approved SIP providers out on the Microsoft website that you can see that have already been tested with Link, and that are that and those providers understand how to set up those SIP trunks 
um, and to enable this huge cost savings. Also, long distance calls are typically less through SIP trunks, um, and you can easily add bandwidth during peak, peak times. So if you know that at the end of the month you you have a lot of call volume and uh, it's it's something you need to ramp up for or you have to ramp up for a holiday season, you can easily ramp up the amount of uh, tele inbound outbound telephone calls that you can make during that those times. So one of the things we talk about a lot uh, is the pre-work that needs to be done in order to implement Link Voice or, or Link Enterprise Voice. Um, so one of those is call admission control. Um, so basically call admission control determines uh, whether a, a call can be made or not based on the available bandwidth on your network. Um, and this, this happens in real time, um, and this affects real time communication. So one of the things that we do during pre-planning for a link a voice enterprise, excuse me, a link enterprise voice deployment is we run through calculations uh, based on the amount of call volume that you currently have and project for the near future um, and determine uh, how we can make sure that you have the appropriate bandwidth. And then we set up call admission control within link so that you can truly um, utilize Link uh, as, an, as a dial tone type of function, as a mission critical service. So call out mission control is, is not really the only network management strategy. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, QoS and, and some other things uh, in, a, in the next slide. The four, the four, the fours of CAC. So it's simple to deploy um, and, and manage without requiring additional equipment, such as specifically configured routers. Um, it addresses critical unified communication use cases, such as roaming users, multiple points of presence, um, and policies are enforced uh, according to where the endpoints are located, and not necessarily where the user is homed. Um, in addition, besides voice, it really can take care of um, making sure that your, all your media calls, such as video and or audio conferencing sessions, uh, get the right QoS, and also can provide the flexibility um, to work with different network topologies. Um, so it's really important planning uh, function of Link, and it's very important to implement. It's really important to implement for any IP-based telephony or media solution. So proper planning, obviously, is, is very, we're very big on proper planning. Um, we've heard uh, stories of other customers implementing Link and not experiencing good call quality. Um, and those issues can be really difficult to pinpoint um, if it appears you, ha you, know, you, you have a lot of available bandwidth on your network. So one of the, uh, several of the things we do is we implement group policies um, specifically on Windows devices um, where you're using the link client as a, as a voice termination point. Um, so we implement QoS policies around the way TCP IP flows uh, from that client back to the link servers. Um, you also need to look at your network um, and as well as any other networks devices that are on your network and, and truly plan um, for QoS to be implemented on all those devices. So a network assessment is a must in the beginning um, prior to deploying Link. Um, we, you really have to take a look at how your network is deployed. Um, you really have to look at implementing QoS in, on the network with switches and routers. Um, and it's just a very important first step you have to do when deploying Link to make sure you get a good solid mission critical dial tone. Everyone knows the dial tone is always there and um, you've got to make sure that that's the case. So link media and signaling is encrypted so this can make issue triage and uh, correlation complicated. So it's very important that, that these steps are taken. So the public switch telephone network, so how do you get link connected to uh, voice? Um, so obviously there are a lot of options. We talked a little bit about SIP trunks already. SIP trunks are becoming more and more popular. Um, obviously that's easy to connect if you have the bandwidth available. You can do IP SIP trunks directly from your tele telephony provider or your telephone provider, your CLEC, um, to your link environment. Um, PRI cards are another good option. Um, a lot of IP PBX or PBXs have PRI cards. 
You can easily uh, deploy a PRI card in a server and then connect link that way. Obviously, you, you'll need to deploy multiple PRI cards if you want redundancy. Um, and then also, we again, we recommend that you utilize the Microsoft supported third party solutions from a PRI card standpoint or SIP trunks. Um, and not lastly, but high availability solutions. So here's a, this is a picture of a just a small or a, a medium small to medium sized site. Um, and what you see here is you've got two firewalls in between the in your DMZ. You have an edge server and a reverse proxy for link. Um, the next moving from left to right, you've got your uh, your two link servers that are uh, in high availability capacity or high availability setup. Um, you've got your Exchange UM environment, and then you've got your PSTN gateway that's connected to the public uh, switch network. And then out across the WAN, you've got um, a branch site, um, and there are many uh, remote survivable appliances that we can deploy, um, and we can deploy those over the WAN uh, so that that branch site appears to be on your local dial uh, pattern and as well appear, uh, you know, as a local site um, or on your on your primary site. Um, and we can also connect those remote survivable appliances to the public switch network. So in the event we have a WAN disconnection, that branch office can continue to make phone calls um, and, and, and function with dial tone. So, What's your next step? So we recommend a, a link right start, and um, what link right start is is a is sort of a jump start uh, to deploy link. Um, it's really around looking at that network assessment, uh, looking at uh, deploying link in a quick way, um, and getting a pilot up in in a very short amount of time, really around two weeks time uh, to deploy link uh, in a pilot mode. Um, so that's really your next step. Does anyone have any questions? Um, you guys